Uh, the toughest thing of working in a Paris kitchen was uh, my French wasn't that good ever. Uh, so all the all the all the plungers or the dishwashers are mostly Africans, from Mali and stuff. We don't speak English, French, uh, and um, communicating. Communicating was the toughest part of it. Communicating with the waitresses, communicating with the people. Uh, for instance, uh, Suzuko, we had this love-hate relationship with the, Suzuko and I, and uh, he'd call me like uh, the some like a name. Uh, it translates to like the little boy, basically. Like I oh, know a little like a little angry little kid. It's a slang. I can't remember how to say it though. I don't remember that. But anyway, sometimes like when you're some lunches, we do like a hundred covers, and we had a, a dumb waiter. So you have to shovel it all into the uh, thing and then send it up, and then wait for them to pick it up and send it down. And you got plates everywhere. People, you know, it's hot. It's sweating. It's like. Uh, Suzuka would hide the hide the pans on me, and like the most when I needed the most. And sometimes he he was supposed to do desserts and stuff. We trained him enough to like, so he'd take that job on. So uh, yeah. So anyway, we were having this fight over the pans. So then we had to do some desserts, and it's like we're just deep in shit, deep, deep. And Suzuka was like, uh, I was like Suzuka, blah blah blah, cheesecake. He was like. Uh, uh, occupé, mais non, like, uh, busy, which he's not, he's sitting on his ass at the dishwasher. But he's sitting at the end of the, the sort of galley, smoking a cigarette. So it's just, uh, and I'm, everyone's just boiling over. And there's this new kid from Australia, just started working there. So it's just sort of like, and I had just gotten like full responsibility of the kitchen. So is that sort of, either Suzuko was going to take the kitchen or, or I was going to. So I had this like sizzling pan in my hand and I just uh, whipped it at him. Just so not to injure, but it was just this, the perfect shot. Like it just skipped on the ground at him and it just like flashed right past his face. Anyway, it was very aggressive, but it was not meant to hit him, of course. It didn't hit him. But then, uh, yeah, <clears throat> he freaked out. Uh, we were just like freaking out, but our communication was not like, that was our communication, but we had this so we were locked, like we had each other, like he's, I'm shaking him, he's shaking me. And then we look each other in the eyes and we're both like so freaked out at our own sort of aggressiveness that we just like backed off. It was that moment where we, he was built like a, a brick, like a, like he was, uh, he looked like uh, he had a body like the janitor on The Simpsons, like just ripped. But he was just like the nicest, softest dude inside. He just came off really. He had a way of really getting under people's skin. Like he'd piss on a tree, he'd get caught by the police, and then like bitch and moan so much that they'd lock him up for like three days. Just because he's, he was melty. I don't know where that story's going. But it was, communication was, was difficult in the kitchen. <laughs> That's not really a good story. But it was, it was a, it was a, it was a moment of, uh, uh, of, uh, just doing what you have to do. But that's not really who I am. But I learned that in the arms of Suzuko. And uh, yeah, we were fine after that.